No, this is not how I normally spray paint furniture, but it is a great way to show you how to spray paint furniture. And we'll be back in a second to show you how. sense right now but it will in a minute I just wanted to go through a couple of the sprays we're going to be using today this one is the home right finish max super uh, HVLP sprayer high volume low pressure um, it's electric self-contained don't need any compressor for it um, we like this one for our paints and our top coats and then the other sprayer we're going to be using today is called a critter sprayer this one um, you have to have a compressor um, you don't need a huge compressor for this one I have a two gallon uh, compressor it's made by California it's a California compressor um, you can find the compressor for around $150 um, the reason I bought that one uh, was simply because it's so quiet um, and then the critter sprayer is around 50 bucks um, these run anywhere from 75 to hundred dollars depending on where you find it um, so we're gonna use the two of these the reason we use this for our top coats and paints um, they're all water-based um, it cleans out easily with this the jug, the tube, um, the front comes off, they give you a little brush and it's easy enough to clean out with the water-based paints. Um, when we're spraying primer, especially like BIM primer, it's a shellac-based primer, um, that needs to be cleaned with either ammonia or denatured alcohol. Um, the problem with cleaning this with ammonia or denatured alcohol is it gets a little bit intense and it's just a little bit much to be cleaning, at least for my preference. Um, I'd rather not have to clean all of this with uh, ammonia. With the critter sprayer, it's very simple. All you have is a mason jar. This cleans out, and all you have to do is clean out the tube. So it's very simple cleaning. It can be done very easily, and that's why we use this one for our, uh, our bin sealer, which is shellac base. It's not a big deal. This unscrews um, so the tube is open. You can even put some ammonia in here and just spray it out, and it'll clean out the insides. Okay, so we'll put things together, and we'll show you some about spraying. Okay guys, so this is the bin sealer. You can see how easily it separates. It's supposed to be white. So you want to make sure that you stir this up really well when you get it. Get everything mixed in there. I'm not an expert on this, but I believe that's actually um, probably the shellac that's rising to the top of this okay guys so one other thing I wanted to mention we found these at Home Depot and I think Sherwin-Williams has them it's the Sherline pour and store can lids these things are actually really nice they just snap right in here like so and then you pour there there's a little vent here so when you're pouring you can have it open but then you don't have to put your can lids we use these for most of our most of our paints really keeps the mess down. Usually try to wipe it off. The other thing is because they're made of silicone, even when the paint does get dried on it, it's fairly easy to clean. Um, you just don't want to get too much on there. If you get it really caked on, it can be kind of a bear, but for the most part, the paint comes right off a little bit of scrubbing, the paint, the primer, because it's silicone based. Okay, so we'll put this together and we'll Get to our drawers. Okay, so we've got a critter sprayer all set up with the bin sealer in here. Um, I want you to bear in mind with this piece of furniture, we've already cleaned it, we've prepped it, we've scuff sanded it so it's all ready to go. Um, we did that beforehand. So, first thing I want to show you with the critter sprayer is the pattern on it. 
So you can see it's just a round pattern. Um, so when you're spraying across, you end up with a line. And you can see from about here to here, it kind of fades out. So you want to come about maybe 60 or 70% down on your next pass. So when you go across, you want your next pass to be about there. So that you're meeting the two heaviest parts. You go across. Okay, the other thing is we don't want to worry about complete coverage on our first coat. Um, always better to do a couple of thin coats. So when you do your first coat, you do want to see some of the furniture colors still showing through. Um, doing a thinner coat allows the paint to dry. In my opinion, it gives you better adhesion overall, and it gives you a smoother finish when you do two coats. The problem with trying to do one coat and cover it in one coat is that you will get drips, because you'll try to cover in one coat, it'll get too thick, then it'll start dripping. The only way to take care of that is to just stand back, let it dry, and then you have to sand it off. So, we'll show you how we do this, and then I'll explain to you exactly what I'm doing. Okay, so on the pass, you notice I started spraying here, and I ended spraying here. You never want to start your spray on the furniture or end your spray on the furniture if you can help it. There are some times, like maybe on this angle, I might start up here and work my way down. So occasionally you will start, but when you do that, you want to make sure that you're already moving when you start your spray. If you're staying stationary or you stop at each end, you're going to get too much of a heavy right here. What will happen is that'll start dripping on you. So you always want to start off the piece of furniture, run it across and end off the piece of furniture. So you can see what I'm doing is uh, I'm spraying about six inches or so off each end of the furniture. You can also see I'm not getting complete coverage on here, and you don't really want complete coverage. You want it to be coated, but you don't want to worry about complete coverage on your first pass. Okay, so there's the first coat. So now, in fact, we'll go ahead and we'll do this um, on the side too, so you can see how we do that. So there you go. So now you can see it's not complete coverage. That's okay, this will dry up faster, and then you can come back for a second coat. Okay, we got quite a warm day today. It's about 84 degrees out. So the paint's drying really quick. It's only been about 10 minutes. This is already dry. So we're gonna go ahead and give it a second coat. Now normally when I set this up, um, one of the first things I do, you can see um, how bad my tablecloth is down here. And that's because before I start spraying the furniture, I usually just give a little spray out of this, make sure the paint's coming out well. If it comes out, you know, with globs in it or something, I don't want that on my furniture. So I wanna make sure it's spraying right first. Okay, so here we go. Same pattern as before. Okay, so we'll see how that looks. We may do one more quick coat on this. It's probably actually going to dry almost that fast. Yeah, see? That's how fast we're drying today with the heat.
Okay, so one other thing, guys, it's probably coated well enough. And then uh, one other thing I just want to mention. Normally, whenever you're spraying, you want to make sure you're wearing a good mask so it doesn't affect your breathing. Um, today, I'm doing it just so I can talk to you. I've also got a big fan in the back of the garage that's pushing all the dust away from me so I'm not breathing it. Uh, but normally, when you prime or paint or top coat and using a sprayer, you want to make sure you have a good mask. Um, to filter out that paint. You don't want to be breathing the paint, especially um, shellac based paints, anything that's like oil based or whatever. Um, you just don't want to be breathing. It's not good for you. So make sure that whenever you're spraying, you're wearing a mask. Okay, so our primer's all dry. Um, when you feel this, it's a little rough. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just give it a little scuff sand. It doesn't take a whole lot to level this out. You're just kind of getting the rough spots out of it. And this is just a 120 sandpaper or a sanding block. Okay, so we got our sprayer all set, ready to go, our paint's in there. So I'm gonna kind of show you the same thing. Now this sprayer, um, the nozzle actually turns. So when you're this way, the spray is actually up and down, this way. When the sprayer nozzle is up and down, then you're horizontal this way. So it's kind of opposite the way this is pointing. So I'll show you the pattern on this. Bring it out of the way of the camera so you can see it. Okay, so you see on this. It's more of a line instead of the round circle we had with the critter sprayer. And there it is with the nozzle turn. So you can see this for going up and down. This one would be good for going sideways. A lot of times I'm able to just turn the sprayer when I want to do something that's um, and up and down rather than turning the nozzle. I get lazy like that. So on this one, we're gonna kind of do the same thing. So when you go with that, you can see that your thickest is right here. Overspray is about here. So when you go back the other way, you want to overlap. You're overlapping just enough so that you end up even. And again, we're going to be going at least two coats on this. Remember, we want to start off the furniture and end off the furniture. The other thing is you do not want to be going like this with your sprayer. You want to be coming straight across, keep your sprayer level all the time back and forth. You don't want to be swiveling your sprayer from one point. Just to show you. See what happens, you're not going to be level, you're not going to be even in your coat. So we want to make sure we're going straight across with it. Again, you can see where I stopped off and started off the furniture on each pass. And then, like I said, sometimes I just tilt the sprayer. Okay, so let's first coat. You can see in the camera that it's not fully covered. There's still some white from the primer showing through. So we're going to let that dry for a little bit and then we'll come back. We'll give it a second coat and we'll see what that looks like. Like I said, we may have to give it a third. You just have to 
go until you get it covered but you want to make sure that you're not going too thick that's really the key to this whole thing if you put it on too thick you're going to get drips and then you're just starting all over so i'd rather go thin and go three coats um you know if you can get it in two great <laughs> but i'd rather go three and not have any drips okay guys we're not quite dry yet but i just wanted to kind of give you a close-up and see if I can get you to see this how some of the white is still showing through we're not completely covered okay so that's what we're gonna look like after the first coat remember it's always even if you're brushing spraying it tends to always look worse before it gets better so that's that's what your first coat will look like don't worry about it once you put another coat on or two if you have to it'll all smooth out and it'll look good but that's the way it's going to look after your first coat. Okay guys, so the first coat's dry, so we're going to go ahead and do the second coat. We'll see how that turns out and figure out if we need a third coat or not. Well, if I'd stay plugged in, it would help. Probably if I... Show that little secret right there. If I tied it like this. See what I do? If you do that, it won't come unplugged on you. Okay, so let that dry up a little bit. Um, we might want to do a third coat. I'm going to have to see when that dries. This, this one's a little tough to tell. So we'll let this dry and then we'll take another look at it and determine if we need a third coat on there. Okay, gang, it got a little late last night. So we closed up shop, we let this dry overnight. Um, it doesn't look bad, but I'm not entirely happy with it. If you kind of catch it in the light, um, I can still see some spots that are a little uneven. So I'm going to give this a quick uh, sand. I'm just using a 120 here, but I'm going very light with it. Um, and then we're going to give it one more coat and see how that looks. Generally, um, it only takes two coats on most furniture. The surface, though, um, that they used this this laminate is very grainy. There's a lot of deep grain in it So I think that's why it's going to take a little more than just the two coats but generally Generally two does it But we'll go three on this See if we can have it look a little more even And by the way We just checked our channel and we see that we went over 100 subscribers, which was kind of like a goal for us. So I just wanted to tell you, I really appreciate it, and I both appreciate you guys subscribing and liking our videos. Kind of lets us know that we're doing something right. So if you want to see more of our videos, hit that subscribe button. Like I said, we certainly appreciate it. We're kind of humbled that so many of you are liking. Here. Uh, and so many, sorry, I had to find the towel. And so many of you are liking and subscribing to our channel already. It's very encouraging. Yeah, see right here, you can see how the grain was raised. So it.
Yeah, now we're feeling pretty smooth. So let's give it one more coat. And we'll see how she looks. There's a volume control for paint on this machine, on the sprayer, and I've got it turned way down so I'm not spraying a whole lot of paint. That's why it seems like I'm going very close together on my uh, strips going across and why I'm going slow is because I've got this turned down so I'm not throwing a lot of paint. <laughs> Okay, it looks pretty good. So let's let that dry up and then we'll come back. We'll see how we look. I think that's going to do it. Okay, guys, there you go. After three coats, our finish looks good. Um, so that's basically all there is to spraying with a sprayer. It works really well as long as you, you know, make sure that you come outside on each side so you don't get your drips and you control the amount of paint you're putting on. Um, spraying is easy, it's quick, and it does a good job. So. Before I let you go, I'm going to bring you in on a close-up so you can see how this turned out. And then uh, we'll take it from there. So we'll keep an eye out because in the next few days we're going to come out with a video on doing um, the nightstands. There's actually two of these. So we'll come out with a video on how we did the entire nightstand. Uh, won't be quite as detailed as what we showed you here with the sprayer. But you'll get to see how we did both nightstands, the hardware we're putting on. It's going to be pretty cool when we're done. So, okay, let's take a look at the close-up. And then we'll see you on the next video. You see it's got that nice sheen to it. So it all looks really good. If you look real close, that little sheen, that's actually the reflection of my truck over there. So it looks good, guys. So there you go, and we'll see you in the next video.